What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the best 8-bit controller that's ever been created. Now this thing is absolutely amazing. They've went above and beyond with this controller in my opinion. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I've reviewed a lot of these 8-bit controllers. So this is the SN30 Pro Plus Bluetooth controller. This will work with Android, Mac, Linux, Windows, the Nintendo Switch, and even the Raspberry Pi running RetroPie, either in wired mode or Bluetooth mode. Inside of the box, you're gonna receive an instruction manual, your USB Type-C cable for charging and sync, and the controller itself. They do make a few color variants. The one I have here is known as the SN version. They also have the G version and the Black Edition. The Black Edition looks really good, but I wasn't able to get my hands on it for this review, so I stuck with the SN version. These retail for $49.99. You can pick them up on Amazon, and I'll leave links in the description. On the top here, we have our sync button, USB Type-C for charging and sync, L1, L2, R1, and R2. The trigger buttons on the SN30 Pro Plus are analog, so you do have that sensitivity. And every single button, trigger, and analog stick can be customized with their software. It works for Mac or Windows. We'll go over that in just a second. One of the big changes to the new SN30 Pro Plus is the inclusion of a user replaceable battery. And yes, you can buy these batteries from their website. In the past, with all of their controllers, their batteries were built in. You could replace them and you'd have to order one on eBay. It was just a pain taking it apart, resoldering the battery back in. But now with the SN30 Pro Plus, they've made it much easier. So you can just take this right out and throw a new one right in it. The new controller is also a lot bigger than their older ones. As you can see here on the left, we have the SN30 Pro Plus, and on the right, an Xbox One controller. We're right on par with the size here. In the past, in my opinion, a lot of their controllers were a bit small, but this is right on par with the Xbox One controller. So if you're used to using the Xbox One controller, this should fit in the hand quite well. Pairing this up with your Raspberry Pi, Switch, or Android device like I have here is really simple. Now inside of the manual, it'll tell you to set it up in D input mode for Android, but I prefer using X input mode. That way I can navigate the full menu and the controllers work with games that natively support controllers on Android. Asphalt and all of the emulators you're going to download from the Google Play Store. X input mode is the way to go on Android. All of the Android games on Google Play that support controllers will work with this as long as it's in X input mode. Same thing with PC. If you want to use this on Steam, no problem at all. Obviously, I'm on a tablet here, but a lot of people want to use their Android phone with a controller like this, and luckily, they do sell a clip for this controller. You can get it in gray or black to match whichever gamepad you bought, and it's going to hold your phone right above the controller. Moving over to a little bit of emulation, this is GoldenEye007 using MooPen64 plus FZ from the Google Play Store. It detected the controller right off the bat. I didn't have to do any setup because I have it in X input mode and it works really well with emulation. Now it's time to look at their customization software. It's compatible with Mac and Windows, so you will need a PC or a Mac to customize your button layout, but it's really easy to use and I just want to give you a quick look. So like I mentioned, the SN30 Pro is fully customizable, and by customizable I don't mean replacing the D-pads with metal D-pads or anything like that, but it's fully software customizable. You can map the buttons however you'd like using the software here, and I'll leave a link in the description for you. I have mine installed, and it also makes it very easy to update the firmware on these controllers. So I have to connect the controller to my PC using the included USB Type-C cable. I'm going to plug it right in. And as soon as it's detected, if there's new firmware, you can go ahead and update your controller from here. My firmware is now fully updated to the latest version. Go ahead and close this down. And here's the customization screen. So we're in switch mode now, but I'm going to put it in X input mode. I use X input for Windows or Android. They do mention to use D input for Android, but I prefer using X input mode because we can navigate the full Android operating system. We got mapping, which we're on now. So over on the left-hand side is the button on the controller. Over here is the command. If I wanted to change L2 to let's say R3, I can do it from here. 
I like the way this controller set up. I'm really used to the way it's set up, so I'm going to leave this alone. Next up, we have analog stick sensitivity. So we have the left stick, right stick. I can adjust it from here if I'd like to. I'm going to leave mine at 100%, but if you want to, you can go all the way down to 1%. You see how the circle gets a little smaller? So I have the analog stick moved just a little bit, and it's going to 54%. I'm going to bring this back up. Now we're only at 3%. So that's a really handy feature. We can also swap the sticks or we can invert the X and Y axis. Next in the menu, we have trigger sensitivity. Now these are analog triggers, so you can just pull them a little bit or you can pull them all the way. Same thing here. If we take, let's say the right trigger all the way down, just by pressing it a bit, we'll go to 100%. Bring it back up, same amount. We're at about five to six percent. You can also swap the triggers from here. Vibration, left and right vibration motors. You can turn these down. You can turn them completely off if you don't like vibration on your controller. And we also have a macro function. So let's say I just wanted to set my Hadouken over to L2. So when I'm playing Street Fighter 2, all I have to do is press one button. I'm going to add a button. That's going to be L2. From here, down, add, down right, add, complete right, add, A, add. So if I sync this over to my controller, when I play Street Fighter 2 or any other game that uses this button combination for let's say a special move, all I have to do is press the L2 button and it's going to perform that move for me. You can set this up in any orientation you like to. So for L2, I do my special move to the right. I could also program my R2 to do it to the left in case I'm second player. So this is a really awesome function. It's something that I personally won't use a lot, but I know there are a lot of people out there that would love to have this function on their controller. We can also set up different profiles. Sync this to my controller. I can name the profile, create, and now my controller is set up with this macro. And if I adjusted any of the other parameters on the controller itself, it would add them. And if you ever just want to go back to stock, we can always go back up here, default profile, sync to controller. So that's it. I mean, there are a lot of options in here. They've done a great job with this customization software. It's going to be a big help to a lot of people and hopefully all their future controllers support this software. So far, so good. The D-pad on this thing feels absolutely amazing. They've really done a bang up job on this one. Here we have Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And with the D-pad, I haven't missed any of the special moves, but when I move to the analog stick, I need a little practice with it. Overall, great build quality, nice controller. It is a little expensive at $49.99, but if you are already looking into picking up a controller for your Android device, Windows, Mac, Linux, Raspberry Pi, or the Switch, this is a great option. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I highly recommend this controller, but if you already have an Xbox One controller that's working fine for your PC and Android, there's really no need to pick this up unless you really want that customizability. But if you are one of those people, I will leave links in the description to each one of the variants of the SN30 Pro Plus. I'll also leave a link to the phone clip in case you want to use your Android device with this gamepad. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below, but like always, thanks for watching.